If you thought quantum physics is only about the microscopic, think again. Today's Nobel Prize winners in physics proved otherwise. It's now been a hundred years since Schrodinger developed his famous equation, but for the longest time, the direct consequences of this equation only made themselves known in systems too small to see. Think individual atoms or perhaps large molecules. Nothing that could be reasonably described as human scale. But in 1985, John Martinez, Michel Dvoret, and John Clark effectively built the first artificial atom, about a hundredth of a millimeter across, which is slightly smaller than the thinnest human hair. And remarkably, they were able to demonstrate not only quantum tunneling, but also discretization of energy levels in precise agreement with quantum mechanical predictions. So let me give you a taste. It all started with Josephson junctions. See, if you separate two superconductors, you know, those seemingly magic materials with no electrical resistance, with a thin insulating layer, you get a Josephson junction. And what makes them special is that sometimes electric charge, in the form of Cooper pairs, will flow across the insulator, leading to a small trickle of charge, something that would usually be impossible, as insulators don't conduct electricity. Nonetheless, as a result of quantum mechanics, specifically quantum tunneling, that charge has a chance of jumping the gap. Now, the rate at which current can jump the insulator is controlled by the phase difference between the superconductors. That might seem confusing, but it's enough to know that it's related to the collective behavior of the electrons in the junction. So if one can measure the current flow, which is easy, then one can measure that phase difference, and that's what they did. See, theoretical calculations predicted that if a Josephson junction is cold enough, that phase difference should behave like a quantum variable. It should have discrete energy levels and be capable of quantum tunneling through an energy barrier. And lo and behold, they showed that this is indeed the case. By measuring resonance effects via induced microwaves, they indirectly measured the energy levels that the phase difference can take on, and they matched, within experimental bounds, the exact energy levels predicted by quantum mechanics. Furthermore, they were able to observe quantum tunneling of the phase difference to a state that is classically forbidden by an energy barrier, and that quantum tunneling rate was amplified by forcing the phase difference into a higher energy level, again, exactly as predicted. And to be super clear, they weren't just demonstrating the Josephson effect is correct. They took advantage of the Josephson effect to show that a macroscopic variable, the phase difference, behaves quantum mechanically. And in doing so, they laid the groundwork for the development of a wide array of artificial atoms, now called superconducting qubits. I don't know about you, but in my view, that's pretty worthy of a Nobel Prize.